sun. So yeah, good morning. Hey guys, let's make coffee. Most important part of the day. My super grinder, this is the best. So for those of you that don't know, I love coffee to the point that I get my own beans and I grind them and I make it because it's far better. I mean, it's still nice to get a takeaway coffee, but making your own, such a ritual. Yeah, this, this, <gasps> ignore dishes. I need to wash them. I definitely want to talk about how I went from the most anxious, panicky and very sad person to this. I um, will want to talk about the differences in terms of anxiety um, that you can't control and then anxiety that you can control and how I got from A to B when I was diagnosed with epilepsy, when I was diagnosed with ADHD, depression, anxiety, all the symptoms and side effects that it came with. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about what it took, the therapy, the self-work, the growth, the people that I've talked to, the diet, the ex everything. Grind it, baby! <laughs> it smells so good as well. Like, you know how they give chocolates, like, as side notes, like, undertone, pineapple, cherry, lime, dark chocolate. Well, let me tell you what this is toffee, caramel. So. I grind it and then I brew water, which I forgot to do. Then I see the light. I hope you're doing well. For those of you who are new here, my name is Lottie. I'm an actor and filmmaker, and this is the Self Health Tapes channel. Um, it's a well being, self help, mental health channel infused with things like routines and acting. And my experience with mental health, I really hope that you can learn something from it, take away something from it. Um, I love doing this, and I hope you enjoy what I. Ow. Oh. <laughs> okay, mental health diagnosis is what I wanted to talk about. First of all, getting diagnosed with any condition, whether that's physical or mental health related, is always really difficult. I was diagnosed with a physical condition, it's a neurological condition, epilepsy, about nine years ago. It was obviously a life changing experience and I was also diagnosed with um, depression and anxiety and ADHD quite recently. First of all, we're human beings. We're not perfect. Um, and that's just how it's right, I think. Without difficulties, without um, challenges, uh, we wouldn't learn, there wouldn't be growth, um, and there wouldn't be balance. However, getting diagnosed with anything is super scary. I think it feels like um, everything just falls apart around you and it's difficult to accept. It's kind of like grief. You have to go through a long period to come to terms with it. This is my opinion anyway. 
Um, I think the first thing that's important, and it took me years, especially with epilepsy, is to accept um, the diagnosis. And when you get diagnosed with anything, it feels very lonely and super challenging. It feels like you're in this lost space. Um, and I'm obviously speaking from my experience, um, but also looking at other people who have been diagnosed with other things and listening to them. Um, there is this common pattern when it comes to getting diagnosed. But the first thing that's important, I think, is acknowledging that you have this and going through all the feelings, whether the highs, the lows, everything that comes with the diagnosis. Telling yourself that it's okay, even though it feels wrong and it feels heavy. I think it's important to not neglect yourself. Um, when I was diagnosed, um, I was really angry. I didn't know what epilepsy was. Um, it was so difficult to accept that I have something like that and I could potentially die. But um, eventually I had to realize that I have to help myself because no one else will. The doctors will help to a certain extent, but I will have to figure things out here and here and figure out a plan, a lifestyle that works for me. And sitting with yourself and trying to come up with something, a plan, something that you feel like would work for you. And this goes into um, feelings and lifestyle changes and reactions. It's normal to rebel against a condition. It took me years to accept that I have something that I need to manage, that I need to live with on a daily basis. And it's something that will influence most areas of my life. It will influence how I spend time with other people, what I eat, how I sleep. And that took me years. So I think the second thing is after um, acknowledging your condition um, and diagnosis, taking the time to feel anything that comes up, whether that is uh, anger, whether that is sadness, anxiety, whether that is just curiosity, and taking the time to feel what comes up and sitting with it. When you get diagnosed, it's really easy to fall into this rabbit hole of um, self-neglect and some conditions also, unfortunately, come with self-neglect, such as depression. And it's so easy to fall into that trap and create this very negative self-talk and this sort of toxic lifestyle because you reject your condition so much. And that's what happened to me. There is a plane, I'm really sorry about the noise. The third thing I wanted to talk about is obviously lifestyle changes that um, you're going to have to make when you get diagnosed. If you want to heal and if you want to help yourself when you get diagnosed with something, you're going to have to make lifestyle changes. Now, sometimes that is very difficult to do alone. I've had times when I was able to do it on my own and I've had times when I was just so helpless. I've had to ask for help, um, call people, call professionals, talk to my family, talk to my friends. And that's difficult because some people don't have that support system. Realizing that self-help starts really at the point when you start making lifestyle changes in order to help yourself. I hope that makes sense. One of the most difficult things when it comes to getting diagnosed with a physical or a mental health condition is making lifestyle changes. Because you're, you're already used to a certain lifestyle that you're living and suddenly something enters your life, something difficult, something alien, something unknown to you, and suddenly you might have to make a 180 degrees turn in your life. You might have to make grandiose changes that that you're just not familiar with. And it's super scary. Um, it's also, to a certain extent, exciting because it can change your life for the better. I'll give you an example. When I was diagnosed with epilepsy, before that, I was living a very crazy lifestyle filled with late nights, parties, 
alcohol. It was just hectic, very unhealthy, especially for someone who's so young. I think I was 18, so this was going on from like 16 to 20, 21 when I was diagnosed. The lifestyle change was huge, something that I've had to make um, straight away, but I was rejecting it so much that for the first few years, I carried on doing the exact things I wasn't supposed to be doing. And it took me a long time to figure out what works for me. So lifestyle changes are essential to make in order to heal, to get better. I think there are lots of things that you can use to help yourself. Um, but I will make a separate video on the lifestyle changes and tools that I think really work and help um, to contribute to your self-help and well-being, whether that comes from a physical or a mental health issue and difficulty. So the first thing when it comes to lifestyle changes for me was medical. Um, that's super challenging and shocking because you have to go through medical tests um, especially when it's a physical condition so many things that are new to you and you have no idea like what's going on obviously you get prescribed medication now this is something that i also want to talk about in more depth in another video i think um just in a nutshell medication is something i actually don't like but in the short term, certain conditions, um, it can really, really help, especially um, when it comes to things like depression, when it comes to things um, and situations where you really feel awful. So I think it's not something that ideally anyone should take forever, unless it's a condition where it's unavoidable, where it's so essential that it protects your life. So for epilepsy, for instance, it's something I have been taking since I was diagnosed because it um, protects me from getting seizures. So obviously that's important because I don't want to fall into the tube and or in front of a car. I don't want to <laughs> risk my life. However, I hate taking them and it's the reality. I've been taking lots of medications. I've tried lots of medications, but it's important to listen to the experts, the doctors, and you know, make a decision after that. Make a decision whether that works for you, whether that doesn't work for you, whether you want to change it. I went through this crazy journey of medications for um, epilepsy, depression, anxiety, sleep, you name it. It's tough, but I think when you feel unwell when you when your life is at risk it's um, important to do that and then obviously there are other lifestyle changes that you can make after that and that really boils down to your perseverance diligence and it just really depends on you because other people can help you to stay on track motivate you um, but really the lifestyle changes need to be made by you. And these lifestyle changes, just in a nutshell, include changing your daily routines, your diet, the way you sleep, the way you spend time with people, um, looking at what works for you, what doesn't, what situations serve you and what situations don't serve you. For instance, if you're anxious, being in crowds can be very triggering. So in terms of lifestyle changes, I think what's important to finish off is to create a change around your diagnosis, around your condition, so that you benefit from these changes rather than exacerbating the symptoms, rather than neglecting yourself. And I think if it's really difficult for you to do, this is when you need to reach out and this is when you need to ask for help and that's so hard. I know it's really difficult because I've been through that. I've been there. I'm the kind of person that also always wants to solve everything by herself. I will say, no, sorry, I'm not gonna, I will listen to everyone, but I'll take what I need or I'll take everything with a pinch of salt and I will figure it out. I will just do it. I will basically take care of everything. But when you're not well, you don't always see the whole picture. Sometimes when you have people around you who are healthier, who are stronger, 
um, who are not dealing with these difficulties can help you. And there's always help out there, basically. And I do believe it's never too late, but it's better to start earlier than later. And this is coming from my experience because it took me years to make those changes. So healing my anxiety and depression, Again, this took so long and I'm still on this journey. Every day is a new day. I try to be very grateful for the day and for the things that I have done for myself so far, for the people who have helped me along the way, and that includes my family, my friends, the doctors I have seen. It's to do with the lifestyle changes I have made based on my experiences, based on the advice that I've received from um, experts, from doctors, from um, therapists and from my family. And so healing is a long journey. First of all, healing takes time, whether that's a physical condition or a mental health condition. But in this case, it's mental health because it's anxiety and depression. Again, it starts with the diagnosis and starts with talking about why you're feeling this way, admitting to yourself that you're in this place right now, that you're going through these struggles and that you need help. And healing is great, it's beautiful, and it's possible. Healing and suffering wouldn't exist without each other. It just means for balance to exist, um, you have to have both. And that applies to everything in life. You just look at the sun and the moon, day and night, black and white, yes and no. So it's the same thing when it comes to healing. Um, every day will be different. Sometimes there will be ups, sometimes there will be downs. And that's my experience when it comes to healing. It takes a whole lifetime. I think it's a constant journey. There is no end. There's no one day where you'll be like, okay, I'm healed. But things can significantly improve with the right tools and with the right mindset. So I think the second thing is mindset is really important. Reacting to your condition and creating a positive and optimistic mindset around your condition rather than something toxic, rather than negative things, trying to build yourself up. So it's like, you know that song, why don't you build me up, buttercup? I love that song. So it's like, build yourself up rather than build yourself down, right? Um, and that applies to relationships, connections, friends. Um, once you start healing, you'll start to notice so many things around you and things that don't work for you, things that don't serve you, things that also serve you. So healing is also that, recognizing what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And creating daily rituals, um, creating habits that work for you can heal you and definitely help your anxiety and depression. And support system is the last one. Having a support system that you can rely on. Being alone in anxiety and depression is very difficult. You have to deal with everything on your own inside, but you don't have to deal with everything because you can speak to people and communities who have been through the same thing. If you have access to a network of people, such as friends, family, um, people who have been through the same thing, um, a therapist, you know, these things can all help. But there is someone out there always who understands, who's been through it, um, who's been through the same thing, somebody who will support you. And I've also mentioned therapy. So when you want to heal from a trauma, when you are working on yourself, when you're healing from something such as anxiety and depression, and this is what I had to come to terms with and it took me a long time to admit to myself god i need therapy <clears throat> and it's such a sort of umbrella term because so many things can fall under therapy it can be seeing somebody and having counseling it can be um, doing something different in your life, such as working out, exercising, you know, creating that dopamine that helps you. It can be changing to a different medication. It can be talking to a new friend, um, somebody who keeps you accountable. But in this case, I mean therapy as in seeing an individual for talk therapy, or cognitive behavioral therapy, um, or taking part in a group therapy in a setting where you can relate to other people, those things can really help to heal 
um, especially when it comes to anxiety and depression, when you feel alone and when you feel alone with those thoughts and you feel anxious and you feel like nobody understands you and these things are eating you up alive, going to see somebody is very brave, it's difficult. I've been through a lot of therapists, I've been through a lot of different like types of therapy and every time I reach out, that's the first thing that I find so challenging, reaching out, emailing people, calling people, I hate phone calls anyway, getting to know people, explaining your deepest feelings and thoughts is so brave and it's difficult, it's so difficult and you know there's always this fear, what if it doesn't work out, what if I don't connect with them, but if you don't try you won't find out, so no risk, no reward like they say. I think yes, seeing somebody after a diagnosis, whether that's straight away or whether that's later, it's really important, I think. It can really help you to heal. And these are the things that have also helped me and these are the things that are currently helping me. Um, the lifestyle changes, the therapy, the support system, reacting to what I'm going through, um, accepting it and sitting with my feelings. So that's the main part of healing and in this case, healing um, your anxiety and depression. Acting journey, active work. This relates and corresponds to um, my mental health um, diagnosis, um, well-being and difficulties because I had changed careers after university. It's really, to this day, it's really challenging. I don't regret it, but um, it comes with a roller coaster of emotions. Acting is a very vulnerable thing, and I just wanted to address my acting journey briefly because it really correlates with well being, mental health challenges when it comes to um, mental health, um, physical health, emotional health, spiritual health. Changing um, to a career in acting was a huge step. I studied psychology at university and media. Straight after that, I just thought this is not for me, even though I absolutely love psychology, but I want to do acting. Now, I will talk about this more and why I started it and what made me go into it in a separate video. But, but the most important part of my acting journey was starting over and managing new emotions that come with changing your career. And I'm sure a lot of people who are watching this and people in general are in the same position. In the middle of changing careers, people are always starting something new. It doesn't just have to be work, it can be anything, but it's never easy. And managing these emotions take effort, take time, take different tools. And when it comes to this industry that I'm in, it's next level. So it takes a complete new level of understanding emotions and understanding yourself and managing what comes up because it's such a vulnerable and self-esteem based industry um, which can be so rewarding and beautiful and successful um, but it comes with so many rejections and so many things that exacerbate already existing conditions such as anxiety and depression. I am still learning and I've developed some techniques but it took me a good few years to understand how this industry works and how it correlates with mental health and how I can exist healthily as a human being in this world and in this industry and carry on working with a positive mindset. So yes, I hope that you can take a crumb or something from this video that applies to you um, whether you are struggling with a mental health or a physical um, condition. My intention is to share my experiences because I'd like to help people. 
I'd like to connect and I'd like to learn more about self-help. I really appreciate um, you watching this video. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to creating more videos and I will see you soon.